Uh... Hey, Ted. All right. Okay, good evening and welcome to the July 10, 2023 meeting of the Hamner Board of Selectmen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is being held in the Board Selectman office in the town hall, plus broadcast over Zoom. We are recording the meeting. Is there anybody else recording it? Seeing none, we will move on. Uh, we have no minutes. We have Jane Bedinkowitz stepping in to do minutes. Jane, do you want to be on camera? No. I didn't think so. Thank you. Okay. We are, uh, uh, Don had an issue that he had to deal with tonight, so we will not be in attendance. As the, is the typical policy with this board, we like to work on major things for the full board. So Craig and I will um, look at the agenda and take a pass on anything that we want to make sure Don's involved with it's at the next forward. meeting. Okay. Um, first thing on the agenda will be end of the year fiscal year transfers. Um, we are waiting for the advisory to review the list that the town accountant has provided. So up until that, while we're waiting for them, we'll address a couple of the other things on the agenda. We have a we, copy of the fire station. Good. Uh, Quickly, just knock off. Uh, we have a, a duplicate utility poles. We know that uh, Don has been concerned and that there has been work between the highway superintendent uh, and the various utilities. Uh, Craig has been instrumental in making sure that the pole near uh, the bend of the river has been taken care of. The pole has been removed and actually it's across the street because they are basically the highway superintendent asked to have the pole so he could use it for a new signpost for Garrish Park. So I'd like to thank uh, Mark, Craig, Don and the utilities for their efforts in getting that done, and hopefully that's a, a good precursor to the way it's going to be done for the, as yeah. you said, the 50 or so right. double poles in town right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, so. Verizon sent out a message today. Yeah, they're being very cooperative. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. They all have very few poles, but they have one. Advisory. advisory. Do you want to see advisory yeah. first yeah. or down the hall? I already did. Very good. They're voting on okay. messages, and then they're coming up. Great. Okay, so that's. Uh, Look at the polls. Uh, spectrum contract. Do you have anything on that? Uh, I just gave you copies of the contract. The current contract, which expires. Uh, it's uh, getting to be the time when we should uh, notify them that we are interested in negotiating. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. negotiating a new contract. Provided the board wants to do that, I assume right. we do. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to be a long process and it tends not to get resolved <clears throat> until the last minute. But uh, uh, it's going to be easier this time because mm -hmm. the town doesn't have local access channels. Right. Usually they fight over that. You know, usually there's a fight as to how many, whether they give you one, two, or three. Okay. But we're not using them and uh, that should make it easier. I know we are trying to contact the local government rep which used to be Tom Cohen and had been yeah. replaced by a uh, newer chap. Do we know yeah. if we heard back from him? I don't know. Uh, Pam was doing that okay. uh, before she took vacation. Okay. I'll kick that off. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Fire station. I know they're still meeting. Ma'am, is there, we covered a couple of things. Did you miss what you were here for or? The veteran services officer? Nope. We haven't got that yet. Great. Thank you. Uh, fire station capital project. Uh, where we left off, um, we had the second meeting from Tecton mm -hmm. Associates, mm -hmm. and um, we have an outline of decisions to make. Uh, there seems to be a fair amount of disagreement or division mm -hmm. among various mm -hmm. players in town. Um, one of the members of our board said that uh, he would like to see this done piecemeal as opposed to a big project. Um, 
and then uh, two members haven't really taken positions yet. Um, um, nothing. I mean, I look at the different building plans we've gotten here, and I look at number one, for instance, which is kind of like you know what I alluded to back at the get go, mm -hmm. replacing the bay on the right with a couple of bigger bays, and. I kind of see where it looks to deal with a couple of things we're talking about. It just shocks me when we're adding, if they're saying the added area is 7,000 square feet. I think that's the total. total that's total. Area. I'm total saying, area. so we're adding, if I'm looking, that's about half of it. So our existing that's even, building is 3763 right. and the new construction is 3182. Right. And we added, Gosh, almost that much when we expanded the highway garage for six hundred thousand dollars. Give or take. Right. So, okay, but well, now looks, we're at six million. It looks like this whole thing here is a turnkey blueprint. You know, the, the mm -hmm. highway expansion was just what three bays, rough, rough <clears throat> block, mm -hmm. steel. You know, and, and done. Finished. It's not even finished. Well, there's the just nothing in there to finish. Well, I understand the roof and the doors, the whole thing. Yeah. I'm just, I don't extrapolate it out to be 10 times as much. Correct. I'm not right. saying it's, you know, the numbers look right. I'm just saying there's more involved with this one with the, the mechanical rooms, the electrical rooms, you know, the different rooms are going to finish off, mm -hmm. you know, yada, yada, yada. I, remember I don't think it's $6 million difference, but, you know. Right. I can see maybe in the two to three, you know, right. It's a little more in depth yeah. inside, but still. Yeah. Jeff, uh, Jeff said that uh, McElroy said, He's projecting several years into the what the future will cost right. several mm -hmm. years. Yeah, ahead. He, he did say that he's assuming yeah. the town's not ready to pull the trigger, so he's looking at current inflation prices yeah. and mm -hmm. factoring them out for two or so many yeah. years from now. Right. What he thinks they're going to be. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this number could come in around three million right now, three or four million roughly, and then if you factor in you know whatever inflation and the pricing markup and availability, who knows? Yeah. So, I don't know. I like the idea of option one. Obviously, what's been talked about before, it doesn't address where the town is going in terms of am ambulance slash fire services. Are we going at 24-7? Mm -hmm. If that question was not on the table, this would be a much easier decision for us. We'd be housing fire equipment and response yeah. and how to take care of them. Uh, I hate to get too deep into this conversation without Don here because mm -hmm. there's obviously three of us that are making the decisions, but I feel this is a great opportunity now to look at the future of the fire department and what we envision for them for the next 20 to 30 years. Are they going to continue to be a full-time fire department or as you alluded to, are we going to work in some type of EMS? I mm -hmm. think that's a decision we need to come to collectively and figure out where we're going before mm -hmm. we can determine the building size. All right. You know, we have the ambulance there. You know, we have one year on this contract extension with action. Mm -hmm. What is our future goals? Are we content with paying for an ambulance service from a for-profit company? Or are we looking to do something in a municipal facility? You know, a lot of places around here do it themselves. What are our options? And someone even asked me, why are we not considering regionalizing fire? There's an option there. There's another right. third option. Right. Regionalizing fire. What did you say? Fire as well. Regionalized fire? Right. That's interesting. Right. I don't know if I agree with that, but. No, but they said, why aren't you concerned? Well, you know, maybe everything's on the table. Who's to say? All right. So I hate to say table it, but again, this, this is a discussion that needs to be held with Don as well. So. And then when we, we have three members here, mm -hmm. we want to lay out a schedule for decision making. As far as. I think we have the yeah, same yeah. time. Really, we've we've, 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 we've kicked this say, down the road the too much. The department, then right. you can figure the, the building. Correct. So, so yeah, if we set a timetable, mm -hmm. say, yes, let's come up with a conclusion of what we want to mm -hmm. see by this date, mm -hmm. then it'll turn our, or force our hand into what the next step is. Sure. Without dragging it down the road in another two or three years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back with this. On um, 24. Yes. 24. Right. Um, I just want to go back for a second, John, sure. on the charter agreement. Yep. Um, I know we said we we're looking for the rep, but should we 
have one of them come to our meetings if we can get Bob to schedule with the rep, get a hold of well, them. That's what I was hoping. Is that what you're hoping for? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were just looking Tom for Tom always came to the meeting before. Okay. That's why I'm surprised. I misunderstood you, know. you then. Right. Cliff remember Tom Cohen was our charter rep for many years and came in every, actually more often to see how things were going, et cetera. Back when, even when charter was the only game in town, they still showed up. How's your sense of the community saying how their charter service sure. is going? Right. Oh, that's a question I'm asking. Uh oh. Fire departments here. You missed your opportunity. We chatted. It's all over. You missed it. <laughs> Ed, you want to come in? Ed, you want to come in? <laughs> it's cool right now. Let's talk. Hey, Cliff. Oh, wow, look at the fancy shirts they got. Oh, I, I embroidered them shirt. myself. Did you really? Did you? I saved money. Yeah, look at that. I'm the yeah. select one. Getting, I can Save tell you spelled out. Barbara wrong. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> out price. Barbara? Is that yeah. it? <laughs> it works. We're joined by the uh, fire chief and your current title, Mark, is? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, LP. Wow. Nice. All right, so anyhow, so Don is not here due to an uh, issue that came up, so we're not going to make a huge decision on fire. We, re we recognize the importance of it. We don't want to keep kicking it down the road. We'll put it on for the 24th, and it's time, as Craig has said, to set a timetable to figure out where we're going with this. It can't just be a weekly agenda item. We have the fish are cut bait here pretty soon. Uh, let's see, we do have uh, waiting for the advisory committee to come and talk about end of the year transfers. I know you mentioned that you've got a couple of outs. So the ledger you presented is the second to last one yeah, next week. On, 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 on today's warrant, there's nothing that'll overdraw any accounts or not be make money available. No, but I know I had a couple of uh, fire expenses to go into really not exceed his account, but really draw it down to where you'd expect it to be, right? There were a couple of very minor overdrafts that I just charged away. No, no, no overdrafts. He had quite a bit. It was, wasn't even close to an overdraft, but it was a fairly sizable expenditure out of a an account that had plenty left. Equipment, yeah. and we right. had plenty of money. Right. Right. Exactly. And there was yeah. some very small overages. I didn't even bring them to you. I just fixed them. Great. Thank you. Well, while we got Ed here, just you might not have the answer for this. Uh -oh. I was just looking at, the, I mean, we're talking about the, the, the budget or the ledgers. The, the police fire communications is overdrawn. Yeah, that's um, that's an accumulation of overdraws year after year after year because we weren't paying for it out of a yearly budget. We had set it up as a large amount and then we drew it down and all of a sudden we drew it down beyond and Don picked it up. We, we drew it down below what was available. So we ended up uh, quite a bit overdrawing that account. but. There was also some charges in there that were budgeted. I think they at that time they needed new phones or they needed something new mm -hmm. that was charged against that that then made it worse, but it wasn't budgeted for. But that was the ones we thought had money in it. Yeah. That's why we did it. Right, and I thought. Yeah. When, and you might have seen something that looked like it had money on it, but then when we took the three places where the money was, and when you add them all up, there were no money. So the, does this encumber all those? Yes. Overages from when we were doing the the upgrades. Yep. Yeah, so when we thought, takes, we thought we had like 15,000 right. extra, that and, that takes care of and any of the upgrade of his radios, we said, yeah, we're going to take it from that. Yeah, and yeah. that's one reason why it ended up being overdrawn right. to start with, I didn't know you thought you had the money, mm -hmm. you didn't. And okay. So, uh, but... Um, the, other, the other charge that surprises me, and this is, I know we had the email, about the defibrillators. I see a what charge... Yes, the, the AEDs, thank you, Craig, <laughs> and all their appurtenances, too. But I see that there's a, a balancing thing there, I saw an email from the chief questioning, you know, should we be buying new ones at the fall town meeting? Well, which kind of, what do we just appropriate? We, we appropriated the yeah. maintenance. Right. Right. Yeah. So the new purchase thing kind of came out of the blue because I don't recall it being mentioned before. Yeah. And what's the, what was the overdraft? Well, those are the maintenance and some of the charge, some of the purchases for defibrillators that we over, we over budgeted years ago when we bought them. Right, with so the idea we're able that to keep, the know. maintenance would continue to come out every year after year. Uh, well, right. this was the year that too much there wasn't enough money to take mm -hmm. care of all that. So that's why you had an overage. Okay. So it's been negative for years, is what you're telling me? No, 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 just this year. Just yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Just this year. Okay. So the warrant article just kept going to, 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 to right. But we also did a transfer <clears throat> in the special town meeting towards that account. 
<clears throat> toward the defibrillator maintenance in the in the, the special annual? special town meeting. What special town meeting? Back in uh, October. No, it was, we just did it this past no. this past spring. No. AEDs weren't they? Yeah. It was just this past spring we did it for the current yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, why is he asking about buying new ones? I, I mean, out of the blue, and the only asking is he sent an email to Doug asking about it. Yes. Have some information. Um, the police <clears throat> chief stated that while he was signing up, a new representative took over the contract for the AEDs in the area, um, and he recommended that they are just about to end of life, and maybe perhaps they should start thinking about replacing these AEDs or aging out. Um, instead of spending the maintenance money to keep them going. I think that's where that came from. Right, but the maintenance money, new ones are $2,000 each or more? Yeah, I think $2,500. Okay, and we have 10 or 11 of them? Mm -hmm. Well, one's, more one's new through the Five country. and four, we got one at the... Uh, senior. Senior right. center, one at the highway garage, right? Yeah. One here, and one here as well. Rings right. a bell to me for some reason, but that could be wrong. Six, six, 16 rings a bell for me. No. Mm -hmm. no. I think it's. No, we're counting. No, you have, we don't count you the school. Four, right? Yeah. And the police have five, I believe. Right. We one have, here, we one senior. Five, actually. And that's it. I think there's a lot. Yeah, so 11 or 12. 11. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think so the you're... discussion was do you get nine now, or do you space it out and do two and two and two and two? I think that's where you guys left it at 10. <coughs> Hmm. I remember something too that yeah. Yeah. he went with a lower maintenance plan because we realized mm -hmm. a lot of them were out or old, if I remember correctly. We went mm -hmm. with a lower. And I think the rep recommended the mm -hmm. lower maintenance plan because he mm -hmm. said you need. Yeah. yeah, if you put a battery in one of these, you're gonna doing. you're gonna be replacing it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that seems mm -hmm. to ring a bell. Okay. Well, that all goes back to I think uh, Bob had asked about have we sent out the memo, the typical special town meeting memo. You know, asking for emergency warrant articles, yeah. but I mean, if you were replacing at that number, you're looking at thirty grand. You know, eleven times twenty five hundred, roughly, whatever. And so that goes back to Mr. Magic here. Do you have any prognostication on free cash? No, don't even try. All right then. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be good. Fifty years of experience. Don't even try. Right. It's not. It, no, I would say. Yeah. Within two weeks, I'll have a really good idea. Mm -hmm. But we've got a lot of overages that, and you're, well, there's some things here too sure. that are going to cut into so, it. Right. So you don't expect a lot of extra coming out of the budget, sorry, appropriations. Right. Because right. we kind of overspent that dramatically. Okay. So that'll be flat. Right. Maybe. And then I have not looked at mm -hmm. what our, rep, our collections are versus last year. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the the, the uh, statutory balance sheet right now mm -hmm. we spent more than we took in mm -hmm. by two hundred thousand mm -hmm. somehow somewhere that's was drawn out of previous monies that weren't used in unreserved fund balance right. that's what gets recycled with all the new numbers and add that into mm -hmm. the last year's number right and then we see what we get that but i'm i'm not confident that overspend is that have anything to do with grant or other funding from the state that hasn't come in that we we're anticipating mm -hmm. we'll talk about that so that's where that's from yeah. right. a lot of that yeah a lot of them which hurt us two years ago big time it hurt us last year too right right it hurt us for 2023 right they keep kicking that down the road. Oh, you'll make it up. Oh, you'll make it up. Well, yeah. it was a three-year contract, and mm -hmm. we did get our money for year one, year two, and Bob's got a guarantee, well, a state guarantee that the money, the rest of the money will come in in August. Okay, that's not going to do us any good. Next year's, yeah. yeah. We talked about that. Right, right. That helps us next year, but not this year. Right. And commitments have been fairly steady, decent. Well, we Real have our... Max we size. Have, we have our... It, it, yeah. Yeah, we did well mm -hmm. in excise. I was mm -hmm. glad we got that last commitment. Out. The last commitment went out, and you've gotten money in. Yeah, that. so that was that was a bit of arm twisting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It was hard work for those folks to get that out by by uh, May thirtieth, so we could right. collect the money by June thirtieth. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did well. So we we really did very well in motor vehicle excise. Mm -hmm. um, I did see that we got a check for the first half of the uh, solar landfill money, and of yeah, course, it's the uh, date yeah. of July 1st, so it's good for next year, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, well, they gave us the money last year. Right. So 
it's a year to year thing and we mm -hmm. had plugged that in as an estimated receipt for right. last year and we mm -hmm. did get it so um much like they'll be paying every six months or so i'm guessing um i think it was once a year no well we're supposed to be a hundred thousand i see this one came in at 49, 49. so yeah it's like you know so that's something and um the board of health expense overage for the, the shared health agent didn't um, you ever get that finalized bill? Remember, they were supposed to revisit and recalculate when we, we had Finn in here? We got a recalculated bill, and mm -hmm. it was higher. What? It was higher. The first bill that came out was like 19, and then it yeah. went up to 22. 21, 22. Yeah, I think that's yeah. like 23 now. 23, yeah. But that, that's the number. 23 was the number when Finn came in, wasn't it? And we were here supposed to go back and figure something out. My recollection is that the first bill was under 20,000. I yeah. know it was. And then it came in a bit higher. Mm. We sent them back to go do work to get charged more? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> um, with the promise that this year the state reimbursement is going to be higher and will cover all expenses. Mm -hmm. That's what we were told. Yeah. Well, I know we have accounted for that in the budget for this year no yeah. town meeting but well wasn't that because of an error on their part in calculating their budget and it's their hiring part of that and the hiring came in higher really, than they thought it, when it they looked at the market they need to pay benefits. more people raises right. and benefits right. weren't calculated properly by town along mm -hmm. okay. all right so still waiting uh so we do have a BSO on the agenda at seven. Okay. Do we know who's coming in for that? Is Ken coming in? I asked Ken to come in. He said he would. Okay. Is there any way we can get him to? Hmm? You know, I get in touch with him. To come in early because we're motoring right along. Unless Right. Huh? You have Ken's number? I have Bonnie Cell. Do you want me to call that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, you're calling. Bob, you want to give us, uh, why don't you give us your time, Minister? I was going to say, uh, yeah, here, I'll knock that out. I, I thought that. Uh, Ken gave us his cell phone yeah, number right. for this uh, this email that he sent that I printed out for you. So oh, you're did. back at oh, yeah. Okay. So I can I can call him directly, uh, Ann. Oh good, because I'm Jane, but Bonnie didn't answer. Thank you, Billy. Thirty years, don't worry. How many years? Twenty. Total? That's it? Well, no, I did park and rack. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've worked all my life for the town of Panda since I was 13. Yeah. I'm an old lady. I think it was like I did census for uh, Rita. Bonnie. Going back. Okay. Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> it's okay. Is um, Ken there? Do you think he could come down uh, a little earlier, like now, for the selectmen's <laughs> meeting? Is that possible? Right. Jeff got the other side. I don't. I give it back to him. <laughs> he has I to bring some for them. Oh, wait, I can. In the advisory. Okay. All right. I don't have one copy. Just put it right here. We can share. Oh, thank you. I will. Tell I appreciate He's looking for his it. copy. This may be it. All oh. right, Bonnie. No, I have Bye -bye. it. He's on his way. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we had five candidates for the fire department administrative position. Mm -hmm. They were interviewed by Chief Poulin, uh, Jane Bedenkowitz, and me. And we have a tentative candidate, and we're awaiting a final recommendation from the chief. Okay. We should have that. Uh, well, we should. We can have it on the seventeenth or the twenty-fourth. You can have whenever you want. We don't need it. 
Right. So the chief is hiring yes. a new administrator. And then yeah. at some point, if he wants to bring that person in and introduce the board, that's yeah, great. Okay. But right. we anticipate this to be a department hire. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right? Yeah. I mean, working for the chief. New audio system yeah. uh, has arrived. And uh, we'll have that set up ASAP. Uh, Okay. I should also announce that we've, we've had some beaver dam issues. I won't give you the locations, but they're printed there. Mm -hmm. uh, and two have permits for trapping. So uh, the town needs to keep up with that. Has the market gone back up? I know it died in the 1800s. It really yeah. went down. But, you know, yeah, if well, hats are back, that's great. Beaver dams are... So we can issue permits for trapping, is that reason? Mm -hmm. On an emergency yeah. basis. Yeah. You can issue permits for trapping in season, mm -hmm. and you can also do the so-called deceivers, beaver deceivers. Uh, the, one of the problems is if you have a dam mm -hmm. and you have a pool already mm -hmm. stopped up, if it's private property and the owner says release the dam and the water goes downstream and mm -hmm. floods somebody, mm -hmm. the owner is liable. So there's, there's a lot of reluctance on the part of private owners. A dam's on private property they get advised not to allow the release of it so well i see the list i am surprised and happy to see that the biggest problem we used to have was east low metal road on my Powellwitz's farm and thank goodness it's not on the list because that was a big problem well it's still early and right. finn said we're inundated everybody is right now oh. with beavers it's terrible hmm. there's a lot of activity okay okay uh, we posted the position for administrative assistant to the Board of Selectmen and Town Administrator internally. Uh, we have a quality candidate. Uh, I'll conduct an interview and bring that candidate, presumably, to the Selectmen mm -hmm. on the 24th. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, EV charging, um, I think that program is on hold indefinitely. Um, the state has a program called, a grant program called Mass EVIP. And that program itself is closed right now. Mm -hmm. And we don't know when it's going to open. The speculation is they're waiting to see what the money's like they're going to get from Washington. Apparently they're going to get quite a bit. But they've closed the program. That program offered up to 50000 to do it. Mm -hmm. The grant that we got was this minuscule grant. I called them and said, we can't do anything with that. And I said, furthermore, if you're going to do it, you may as well get a DC charger because that would allow residents to go and get their car charged in mm -hmm. 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. These level twos that the state is now financing take six or seven hours. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> presumably if we did something over at the senior center parking lot, right. no benefit to people, would pull, people would pull in and let the car sit there right. and occupy mm -hmm. those ports. I don't think that's going to be functional. Right. So until we can get something, mm -hmm. I think, more suitable for our need, mm -hmm. or our future need at least, mm -hmm. I think we, we want to hold off. Laser fish consultants are coming for four days on the 24th to the 27th. Mm -hmm. um, had an interesting conversation about implementation and with uh, the treasurer. And he's urging that we have a champion, that someone internally, like a member of the Board of Selectmen, who's a tech guy, uh, to champion this process. <laughs> because what tends to happen is one or two departments will embrace it, and there's some trouble getting the other departments, mm -hmm. particularly if they are, let's say, independent of the Selectmen and mm -hmm. independently elected boards, mm -hmm. get them to buy into it. We should get our facilities management person on that. Yeah, yeah. right. We should do that. We that's should find exactly, somebody. We should find somebody on the board who's in favor of it. To have them facilities management. People, yeah. I, I did yeah. have a. All well, the um, place yeah. efficiency. Like that. I, I did have a discussion with the de facto facilities manager today about it. We didn't reach any conclusions. <laughs> uh, no word from the Granby selectmen uh, at this point on approval of the IMA. We do know that they put it off. We do know that the <clears> conservation <throat> commission which has been the holdup in other towns, mm -hmm. approves it in Granby. Because I talked to the chair, and they're urging the selectmen to go along with it, but they haven't gotten around to voting at this point. Uh, and also, as I point out, the FOG Committee of the Mass Municipal Association is meeting tonight, 
uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the auditorium with the government study committee. Okay. That's the report. Thank you. I do see the special town meeting articles, one of which is uh, a TA account. Um, I did see online that it was a Springfield City Council or Holyoke. I think Springfield. Springfield. Got Sean a job as yeah. Got a yeah. job as uh, town no, administrator for two towns. Two towns. Two yeah. small yeah. towns in, in northern 000. Berkshire. An hour and a half ride. A long commute. Oh, jeez. Uh, who was the guy, he's a Doug, who used to hmm? be the town administrator for Wolverham? Bob, he lived up. He lived like an hour away before Nick. Yes. Remember? Yes. He was over an hour away driving to Wolverham. Yeah, wasn't he up in the Berkshire? Somewhere? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, Bob, on the special town meeting articles, we got to put the fiber optic on there. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and so work. And we don't have. We don't have the uh, senior center. RFQ. These are all tentative, but I mean, they should be on our tickle yeah, list. Sure. Yep. Okay. You're it. I'm the last one standing. We're all out <laughs> They're all out waiting in the car for you, or what? They're overdue down at the La <laughs> <laughs> uh, Transfer. <laughs> yeah. Expense. So you want to do um, as we run along? This will be quick. Oh, go ahead. This will be quick. No, this will be quick. I mean, is anybody else coming in or you're it? I'm in. Okay, great. Hi, welcome. Thank you. When's the party for Carol? Well, with the date's not set, but really hopefully a couple of weeks. Okay, great. I was just well, a little, little small. Get 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 great. Right. She deserves it. So Cliff was giving us a quick recap of where we stand. I'll be shared with you. We're not in the red. We're just not as much in the black as we'd like to be. It'll make things happen to close out the books properly. Has a great relationship with the DOR, many years of you know cooperation and stuff. And you're confident that Jim will be happy with everything we do. Uh, well, in terms of this, is he's not concerned with this, right? Okay, because this is all internal and it's mm -hmm. according to the law, right? You know, so he's not concerned about that. He'd only be concerned about what the balance of the unused appropriations is, mm -hmm. and I would mm -hmm. give him a report, um, do the math on it, and take out those appropriations that we haven't spent yet that are going to roll over, which aren't we don't have very many of those. Mm -hmm. So um, this is all internal, and mm -hmm. yeah, Jim's Jim's a good watchdog. No. Nope. Yeah. So, but I think also to speak to you, you know what you've done over the years, he understands and he trusts you that what you're doing is is good, and I think that speaks to you. So. Yeah. Well, you know. I've been at it 50 years, and he's been at it 25 of those, I think, or something. Well, you brought him along well then. Yeah, <laughs> well, what, what, pretty soon, figure it out, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's, um, a good, he's a good guy. He's now he's not a guy that's always looking for mm -hmm. an auditor saying, "Well, you know, you didn't do it that way. You didn't mm -hmm. do it that way." And many times, if I do something a little bit wrong, he just fixes it internally. Okay. His own. That one transfer where it said COA salary was actually police salary, right? No, I can change that. But COA had a ton of money they didn't use in their salary account. Well, they didn't. Have, I mean, it's only, they certainly didn't have fifty thousand. Yeah. Well, they had. Uh, well, here, right here. What did they have? Five four one account. Oh, you're right. I think they had twenty something. Yeah. I think I saw your last one. Uh, police had like seventy-two or something. Yeah, hang on now. Five four one. Five four one. Next page. Five four one. Nineteen salary. Uh, they had twenty thousand. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. I think that should be police. Okay. Great. Thank they you. Have plenty of money left. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they were overdrawn in their building maintenance, but I think that was a posting error. So we wipe that out. And then utilities, of course, that just hit everybody, you know. Sheesh. Yeah. No surprise. I'm actually quite happy that the street lighting didn't get overdrawn, you know, with the big bump in, you know, the, the rates. Yeah, exactly. So, and actually, I'd like a report. Did all the ones we actually asked to have added per the police request, mostly in the sessions area, the intersections, ask Pam to check with. Is of Pam Hill and see if those are put in and if we have a new inventory sheet, if you will, from the from the utilities. I'd like yeah. to know. 
Okay. Because we had concerns, remember the other concerns, some intersections weren't well lit down there as yeah, well. In the yeah, concession area. Yeah. Did, and then, are you still waiting for a report from Ham Hill at the grid on what's happening with Chapin Road? Yeah, they were doing, and it's, it's been like a month or two since that email you know, went, and I can't remember the, the context of it, but they were doing something, and then they were checking into something. I can't, I can't remember. So they were doing a line monitoring. They were doing you line were asking monitoring. to verify, how did it change from the last time you did it? Right, well, I don't think right. I did it last time. I think they went in this time and did it, did the line monitoring, looking for the, the draws mm -hmm. and what their resolutions were to those right. draws and how mm -hmm. they were going to remedy it. They put some new infrastructure on the street, mm -hmm. um, not line related, that they were hoping to fix it. But right. I, I never saw the results from the draw test. Right, because the, the, the new draw is about halfway up and your concerns are the people at the end. Yeah, I mean, gosh, yeah. you draw halfway up, are we dropping well, more voltage at the end? Well, the lines right. start getting thinner at the end, too. Sure, the sure. To the end. Yeah. Um, quickly, we did have a uh, Teams meeting today with the state on the Rocket Dundee Bridge project. And by golly, <laughs> it's a it matter you get a few more talking heads on that thing. It's and enlightening. It could make it easily finish that project well before 2027. Yeah. Uh, they were talking sidewalks and we're like, and I said to you, you're talking a sidewalk from nowhere to nowhere. Well, we could do a bike lane. A bike lane would be at least more appropriate. Yeah, I this. looked at that picture and I saw the same thing. That <laughs> they're going to put a sidewalk on the bridge, but no sidewalks on either side. It's like the ones that, I mean, on South Road the Bridge. A crossing or a deer crossing would be more appropriate. Sure, the Chapin Road Bridge has sidewalks which end at the other end of the bridge. Put a bike so, that's the state for you. Right. But we found out that they had uh, entered this project on the transportation improvement uh, program mm -hmm. for 2024, mm -hmm. which wow. didn't tell anyone around here, mm -hmm. and had recently moved it to 2026. And they're almost 25% designed. Um, they being all the bridges or that particular just that Rocket particular Dundee. Dundee. That's the one the state is doing. Is in, how much design well, is involved with it? Yeah, that's the problem because they're not in there terrific, they're not actually in agreement about how to fix it. Yeah. You know, they say, well, it's cocked a little bit. It could be better. The fences on both sides, which is the nice white, you know, which are not up to code, if you will. Right. Looks like the town put them in or the abutters put them in, which I think might have been the case. Yeah. So they should be steel guardrails, whatever, cement posts. Um, Two box cupboards in reasonably good condition. In good condition, a little settling, so they might have to like, I don't want to shimmy one up or something. And the guy at the engineers, the last meeting said, can't we fix this rather than replacing with two new ones? You're talking a bridge that has, I don't know, 10 vehicles go over every day maybe 1987 too it's not yeah, that old it's not and like mark said the box coverts are in great shape we might just have to fix a little spalling i mean is that a realistic possibility or are they going to have to convene another study committee they're hoping to get more they have a huge bridge section yeah i mean it would seem like i mean I'm, i don't know a whole lot about bridges but it would seem like a pretty simple project you would we're talking the state yeah. The one thing is, I mean, it is a beautiful fence, but it is uh, probably not cold. No. Yeah. So, on the other hand, as Bob said, okay, we're talking 36 years. Yeah. No problem. I can't recall ever hearing about an accident. Yeah. Yes. And they talked about, oh, there's this pipe thing there, not realizing what it was, which was the dry hydrant. Yeah. Oh, maybe we should leave that. Yeah, we'd appreciate it. Because that's actually our best source for the fire department. Because that pond, the Goodwill Pond, is pretty, you know, it's always I've never uh, full. Seen a dry hydrant like I had, like, okay. oh, there's okay. PVP. Oh, okay. Anyhow, that's a report on that meeting. Yeah. yeah. And here we are talking about the VSO. Yeah, can I just oh, go yes. back a little bit to these transfers? Sure. Because I'm kind of a concerned about the disregard for the budgets which ones especially it why did we overdraw that by ten thousand dollars okay we had an explanation from i believe robert robert, robert. um i don't robert, know if it was a, robert Brayson. robert Brayson's the manager at entree mm -hmm. 
why did we buy new equipment in June that we had to pay for right away? I mean, that was that bumped everything up. I, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm really concerned that as we that as we spend during the course of the year, mm -hmm. we're getting down to May. And we're not paying attention to what we're spending because mm -hmm. we figure we can always cover it. Well, I think also a couple of four thousand dollars is a lot to be over. What numbers I see? IT is uh, don't ask me. Yeah, yeah. Nine thousand dollars. Nine thousand yeah. dollars. Um, the, the account number. One fifty one. One fifty one. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, okay, we That's paid it because it was put in and it was approved. I mean, when it gets to us and it's approved, technically, I'm not supposed to pay it. Mm -hmm. 159. So, yeah, but there was so much stuff. I'm wondering if it's also a lot of we coded it wrong, because, I mean, we could have taken some of those things out of uh, acquisitions or especially oh, we bought. There wasn't that much money left in acquisitions, but, so. in fact, we did a major acquisition in June. So, I'm just... Again, I'm going back. What, what was the major acquisition? Oh, I don't remember. I just saw the bill and we paid it. And it was it was uh, it was new it was new equipment. It was a new monitor or a new printer or something. I don't question them when they mm -hmm. come. I only look at the dollar amount to make sure it's legal mm -hmm. and that it's approved, which it has been, and then I pay it. I'm not supposed to. Sure. When they come to me, and it's over. And I've always asked, look. Keep track of your accounts. If you get down and you don't have any money mm -hmm. left, before you overspend it, let me know that you know you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. I get no cooperation on that at all. Yeah. All right? So, I think, you know, when you're looking at, there's some things we can't control, uh, but I, I just think we're not, and we had a lot of little ones that I just wiped away. Mm -hmm. We're just not paying attention as the year goes on to the budget. Well, what I think we got to spend. And I think some of the ones you talked about we can't control, like you saw the utility ones. You knew that was going to happen. You saw the huge yeah, bump. I agree. And you, those you're tracking, but yeah. your hands are tied a little bit on something like that. Yeah. These you other know, ones here. Whatever utility bill you pay. Right. I think um, your point is well taken. I think we ought to do a better job of maybe, maybe even quarterly finance team meetings, you know, going in this year, so that we see a better control of the trending, if you will. And looking at where we're going, both monitoring and projecting. Right. So let's let's try and set that up. But just to go back to your point, office equipment acquisition. We're still eighteen thousand in the in the budget, according to the, what you sent. Hang on a second. One fifty nine. One fifty nine. Eighteen seventy six thirty five. I only see information technology nine thousand over. Right. Website one hundred eighty four dollars available, and oh, we have page before that office equipment acquisition. And how much left? Eighteen thousand seventy six. You're right. So is, I mean, is this coding? Is it coding? That's so I'm kind of wondering. Like I said, if it was computers and stuff like that, maybe it should have been coded under office equipment. But it's yeah. hey, if it comes to me wrong, I got. Who are you to say? Right. Exactly. Yeah, information technology should be for the you know the website, the email, stuff emails, like that, you know, yeah. the subscription yeah. licenses, right. stuff like that. But you know, like the, I the said, if fee. somebody here mm -hmm. or somewhere else says this is the account mm -hmm. to charge, yeah. Susie doesn't know that that's not what it should be. Right. Right. But if there's tax on it, be careful because she's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> And I've told her, and I'll tell you this, mm -hmm. if I didn't have Susie, I wouldn't have been able to keep this job. And I tell her that all the time. Through my sickness mm -hmm. and my she current health, health I, mm -hmm. there's no way I could have done those warrants. Great. And so, Susie's the gal. Thanks Good for enough. catching that. I'll fix that. Okay. In fact, I'll make that transfer from here mm -hmm. into that. We'll, we'll make that correction right here. Right. I'm just still curious now about that June acquisition that was large, large too. So. Yeah, I can look at that um, and send you a text. Yeah, if you don't mind. Well, I do recall you got a couple of computers. I mean, you got a new one and stuff. I'm not sure if it's relative, like when you say large, I want a look. couple thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what's a printer nowadays? If you well, get one of these. The, the touch yeah. on that IT stuff too. Just, we make, had sure, that. just make sure the laser fish wasn't 
yeah. of acquisition. That's worries me. Like, right, yeah. The, that, that, that it comes across the grant scanner. instead the of. The scanner yeah. is, is not part of. Well, yeah, but it might have been. Right, we just want to make sure that they didn't hit the yeah, budget, coded, hit, hit yeah. coded wrong. You know, it should so it's really just a matter of making sure that things are coming through coded correctly. Yeah, exactly. So that, so that we know where we are mm -hmm. on the line item. Yeah. I can I, see. Some of us are still struggling with the new code. Mm -hmm. I am. Here, she knew the code that I didn't even know. You know? So, uh, you know, because I don't work with them every day. Mm -hmm. So I've been a town accountant since 1993. Where? That's the only reason why. Where? <laughs> In a few different places. I'm retired. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave your card here. Thank you. <laughs> well, then you know what I'm talking about. You know. It, 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 mm -hmm. I'm listening to you, and I, I'm I'm smiling. And you have the same problems in both towns you were in. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Okay. So, all right. Before we get off that, though, on the IT budget, we had that meeting with Robert Brayson a while back, and he was talking about doing computer refreshes and rolling that over, and we were looking at more costs for that, and that's when we were looking for from him to come back with priorities, what mm -hmm. needed to be done. And I don't know if we've seen that yet. I thought I saw a, a folder here, and uh, make, leave it note for Pam to get that tomorrow, email it if possible to Craig. Thank I haven't you. seen that folder. I've seen a listing right of all of our right. equipment and i remember remember my sent. laptop wasn't on his list mm -hmm. yeah right and we're also concerned like they came in and asked to replace uh bob's laptop with a new laptop but the laptop never leaves the desk right I'm like why and right. with the dual monitors it's much easier if it was a box instead cheaper yeah you know and so that type of thing right. and this one then you know the ones we have we don't need to replace them well, they my were, personal ones just yeah. Yeah. pulling up documents it doesn't need to do anything right. crazy yeah then, like I said, this one wasn't even on the inventory list. Great. Can I call? I'm, I'm with him. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. They're waiting for you to lock a Are they over here? Thank no, you, Cliff. Thank you, Doug. All right, guys. Keep us in, Doug. Keep us in, uh, yeah, on sure the Carol thing. Thank you. I will be in touch shortly about free cash. Excellent. Thank you. A lot of state overages that we never got our money on, so. Your gonna, buddies, Bob. We're going to get hit on that. Your buddies. You know that's all about. I, do. We still I, don't, like paying, I don't like paying in this hand. No, he's a lobbyist. Yeah. <laughs> all the money is through the door from gaming. But you have that 90 yeah. well, that's, that's, that's MVP. Just the only one that uh, uh, we're supposed to is right. outstanding. And I've been after them. They finally told me. Is the MVP. Our timeline is before mid-August. So we had talked to Cliff about doing a, an RFA swap and so mm -hmm. forth so that we could count that as revenue. Mm -hmm. I know that um, uh, not only did they get the commitment in from uh, motor vehicle, uh, but they also got money in from um, from Chapter 90. Yeah. Oh, we got a comment in the chat. Mm -hmm. you got yeah. a comment? Is yeah, Dalton, one? Dalton oh, says recording. Okay. Yes. Okay, Ken, how are you? Good. good. Doing good. So, we hear you've hired another new person. We we have, and um, we spent a long long time in interviews. We had probably six or seven interviews, mm -hmm. and we've settled on a person that has had twenty years in the Coast Guard, and uh, he's been through the medical disability issue, so he's familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, we were looking for outreach experience, and uh, this this individual comes with with uh, doing meals on wheels, um, handling the senior center issues. And the reason uh, we wanted that type of an outreach experience was we would like to seek out the vets rather than try and, mm -hmm. you know, find them if they wander here or wander there. So, so proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. So uh, I, I do have uh, some plans for him to meet some community leaders, mm -hmm. the churches, and uh, of course the senior center mm -hmm. and uh, the VFW and a few other um, maybe uh, community leaders to make sure that he is well known you know? because I think some of the problems that, that I have seen in just the last <coughs> three months uh, it looks like uh, you know we had a VSO and then we didn't have a VSO and and uh, even if we didn't have a VSO why I was available mm -hmm. Uh, no one seeked me out, and it's the district's responsibility that if we don't have a VSO, I'm your representative, I should be able to handle mm -hmm. when there's no VSO around. But, uh, you know, we had some issues where 
um, an invoice was placed with uh, with a Wilbraham mm -hmm. BSO. Um, information has come to me that uh, one of the vets went to Enfield uh, to help, and so I think that's a, a, a problem of exposure. Mm -hmm. My BSOs have not been exposed to the town hall staff or any place where a representative or a vet would come in and say, I, I need to see the, the BSO. Mm -hmm. So we want to make that uh, one of our priorities that uh, we expose the BSO. And the, and the reason I want to say that is because previously we placed them in Thornton Burgess. Mm -hmm. It has a lockup protocol. It's probably not the best place mm -hmm. for Ed to walk in and say, I want, I want to see the VSO. I'd really like to see if you had a, a desk here. I, I know, I, I, I know the issues, but you can't put them in a lockdown school and expect the vets are going to seek him out. Well, One hour to look at well, I One can, day a week. One yeah, day. I can see the, the school thing being okay during the school year. During the summer, obviously, much more problem. The building here, Ken, as you're well aware, you know, we have accessibility problems. We have space problems. I can't think of an empty desk. Only they product. can't share fins off. Yeah, right. That has to be locked. Right. If I see. may, yeah. that does not work at TWB. I've spoken to some of the guys at the senior center. It does not work. It's got to be at the town hall or the senior center. I've actually spoken to a couple of people at this senior center on the building committee and told them that if they can't get it in the townhouse, then the senior center expansion has to have a seat for the BSO. That's not going to happen. My, in my opinion. I don't know who you spoke to on the committee because I'm on that committee and I don't see not that. Not to happen. you, but to others. To yeah. others. Um, it, 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 it's tough, but I can tell you if we don't expose the BSO, we're going to have the same problem that we had with the last two two VSOs, they're going to be unhappy, mm -hmm. and vets aren't going to find them, and then it leads to them going to other places. All right, but again, like I said, my concern is accessibility. Now, how many days a week are you looking for the VSO office to be open? One day a week. Well, let me put it this this way: Is this something that can be sort of mobile? And as a, I'm going to throw it out there that if I was looking for a room that wasn't used one day a week, I would set it up in the auditorium on Friday. That even would be fine. Room, hmm? Even the Melville room. I'm looking at accessibility. Oh, accessibility. You know, it's easy because that's got the ramp up to it. Mm -hmm. No matter what, boom, they come in the front door. They can set, put everything out at a desk and whatever they need. How's something like that? Sound? That's much better than Thornton Burgess. Yeah. You know. Right, Ted, what do you think about that? I mean, again, it's easy to get into the uh, auditorium. Probably Agree. To do, right? Anybody, anywhere but the school. Yeah. Is this something we can flush out? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, if we get a table, he'll he'll have his own laptop, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, we'll have to get his right. internet connected. And then we can work out the, uh, the door things with Jane. And, you know, if we're going to set up hours... Right. She would have the doors programmed to open and then close at a certain time. So, Absolutely. and we can actually, yeah. can you control it so only the front door opens? I don't think so. Is no. it all doors at once? Yeah, yeah that's something now. Yeah. Which so, day would work best, Ken? Um, only because nobody else is using it on that day. You say, you say Friday? What day is Friday. it? Friday, you're not open. Is no, we would open for that. That's my point. We would make the VSO day Friday. Mm -hmm. They come in the front, which is right there. The only other time would be look at the schedule of other departments, making sure the library is not using it on Monday, yeah. um, something like just, that. Just, I, I would have to check. Do you know what East Long Meadow does in terms of their days? No. And once once Jason comes aboard, I think he'll be able to determine which days are best for Hamden, which day is best for Hamden, which day is best for Wales. I would like to have him in Wales on a Tuesday or a Thursday because those are the days our senior center serves lunch. Let me, and well, have more let me throw this at you. Jane might know more. What day would you say typically the auditorium is not used? I mean, I know the library has programs 
sometime in the afternoon. Thursday, I think, is used during the day. I can check the calendar and, yeah. and well, talk to Friday's not a problem. If that it, works, you know, if Friday works, we'll work with with our new VSO. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that all the town hall staff know who he is. Sure. And he does rounds when he comes in to meet mm -hmm. the town hall staff. Hi, how are you? I'm the VSO. I'm in today. Mm -hmm. What can you the exposure here? Look for one day a week. I mean, again, I'm trying to get the accessibility. The easiest room to get into, you know, with the ramp. There's yeah. no stairs or whatever. You don't know what a vet might be. Right. Right. And that's we. If you're saying exposure accessibility, we want to make it as easy as possible. That, so that would good. work. The, yeah. the school just doesn't work. Uh, That's fine, Joe. Um, how many hours do you typically do in other towns? Is it a full day thing or when you have your VSO hours? Well, he's, thir he's 35 hours a week. Um, right, but if you were doing a day, what you would be looking for like a, a 10 to 4 thing? Yeah, or? yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, he may be sitting there at some point in time. I, this is not always going to be office uh, hours. A, a flow of vets coming in, Yeah, you know. So if you were setting up office hours, how many would you want? Out of I'd probably say 10 to 4 would be fine. More than that. Like yeah. Okay. Could we yeah. do it so that you would let either Pam or myself know? We check the calendar, make sure everything's free. Well, I think I think we want to be we want to set it up for the same a regular day. schedule. Right. Yeah. Because you yes. want you want to be able to tell them, hey, look, every Monday, boom, 10 to 4. You can see a person waiting for your questions. And you want it when the town hall's open. That'd yes. Be, that'd be preferable. Oh, okay. I think Craig makes a good point. Friday is, you know. Nobody's here on Friday. So right. if he wants visibility, he's not going to have visibility with right. the town hall employees. Well, well not necessarily visibility uh, with the town employees. I want the town employees to recognize who he is. Mm -hmm. And I can do that by bringing him in. I, I actually plan to bring him in a week from mm -hmm. today introduce them and, and I don't know Bob whether if you have a staff meeting if I can introduce them Wednesdays at 10 o'clock every other Wednesday uh, we just had one last Wednesday so next Wednesday that would be perfect so that they not, not, not this week the following week mm -hmm. 10 o'clock we'll introduce them my, my point Wednesday. is if he's here on a Friday and a vet comes in on a Monday and say gee I don't know I, who do I see mm -hmm. somebody in the town hall is going to say Come back on Friday. Sure, he's here, sure. and I don't think we we totally had that. Okay. okay. And his most of his interaction will probably be with Dick, you mm -hmm. know, um, paying the veterans and things like that. So. So having him during a work day is a better thing. I, I think okay, so. Okay, that's fine. I only threw out Monday because I knew Friday because I knew there'd be no conflict. Well, Friday would be the easiest thing, like you were right. saying, because it's the yeah. availability thing. But I think, yeah. I think we could make it work if okay. we, we want to. All right. So go forward with that. Ken, is this something that you can work with, Bob? And I would say the person, the department that uses the auditorium the most is probably library programs. So if you can get a sense of working with Bob and Ellen Moriarty, what day of the week is typically not a day you use the auditorium for either a children program or something like that? All right. And then hopefully that's not Tuesday and Thursday because you've already got I want to say, you know, kind of thoughts for other ones. Well, but, but I'm, I mean, we're open to that. We we want to make sure we service all of our community. And properly, I apologize. So. And just for the record, you are. So, I'm sorry. I'm Pamela LaDuke. Oh, cool. Um, yep. I, I Wales. work for the town of Wales, yes. correct. And mm -hmm. um, I was also hired by the um, district mm -hmm. um, to provide admin services and to implement best practices. Great. Well, welcome. Thank you. All right. So. We have a course of action then? Yes, we do. You made a great point. Now, the equipment, once we, I know that Rick Green has set up kind of an office over there, but all that stuff is portable and can come over wherever. Yeah, I'll have right. to check it out. I, okay. I did yeah. see it. I know there was a computer and a printer, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a regular desk top. Right. And he's going to need files. He won't need or? that because he has a, a, a laptop and his cell phone will be his public mm -hmm. number his cell phone which he will carry with him at all times i know we had bought a printer for that office when so we have a, yeah. the desk that we had for the receptionist when we had the, mm -hmm. the, that the library has taken over i mean we use it for a reception i mean we could say you know this is 
workspace now. You know, yeah, right. I'm you can't leave any that. files there that aren't right. logged in. Right. So it, his wise. files will be um, East Long Meadow is his main office, mm -hmm. and um, the files are all there right now in a locked okay. office okay. and locked okay. cabinet. So if he has a, an appointment with, I mean, right now you're only servicing two clients here in, in Hamden. If he has an appointment with one mm -hmm. of them, he would just take his, the file take with him. Yeah. In your sense, Ken, is there can be more. People just don't know. Right. Yeah. Um, if you have a minute, there's, there's two things that are happening that are going to create more uh, more interest. Mm -hmm. uh, one is is the PACT Act, which which basically, and summarize it, that those that who were exposed to burn pits mm -hmm. in Iraq and um, Afghanistan, and those uh, that who were exposed to Agent Orange, mm -hmm. can now, uh, through a supplemental form, uh, request uh, uh, compensation, mm -hmm. which they couldn't do before. And that, uh, there's a rush to it because if you get it in by August 9th, mm -hmm. then it's retroactive uh, to uh, a certain point in time. If you pass that, it's only retroactive to August 9th. Mm -hmm. So you got a flurry of that right now. Sure. And it is kind of confusing. Um, so we may see a few of those, but as far as the, the financial compensation mm -hmm. for the vet that has a, a problem financially, mm -hmm. we only have two here, is that correct, Pam? Currently, yes. Yeah, so that's not going to be a big problem to keep a handle on those. The suggestion made, and it's a good suggestion, is there room at the police department? That's something uh, I think, of. That's something I think about, I mean, maybe... It's a, it's a question. I mean, obviously, you know, so that, Bob, that may be a good place. I mean, it's certainly has access. Room, so uh, when you, when bring you that conversation to Scott as well. Okay. okay. Obviously, access is nothing. There's somebody on duty. Yeah. So if they're just looking for a place to sit and meet, I'm sure there's an office that might be available now. So one day yeah. a week. It, yeah. It's not like we need to set up a an office and a desk. No, no, but I'm saying. Yeah. So now you can space. leave equipment there. You know it's secure. And if you said, okay, by the way, Scott's going to say, yeah, every Thursday, you know, or every Wednesday, boom, that second sergeant's office is available. Well, and like you, say, you only got two or three people coming in. It's not like that. One of the problems, though, when they were floating around the senior center was lack of privacy, which you will have that problem in the in the auditorium. Right. So this the so a police station a police station office would be much better for privacy for the so let's loop scotty in on that conversation too please okay okay so will you're going to bring the new Jane, thank you for the i'm going to call you in the next a week from wednesday at 10 o'clock and we'll introduce them to the department heads and staff mm -hmm. and check out uh, conditions of the auditorium right okay unless you want to do that sooner and the uh, police chief will be there, so we can also have a discussion about the PD. Mm -hmm. Okay, Great. so that's a week from this Wednesday. Night, yes. Well, that works perfectly. He starts off Monday, a week yeah. from today. But, so, uh, yeah. Scott sent in a vacation thing. When was that for? I remember he was having... Yeah, no, I, I, mean, I remember seeing anyhow, it. I don't remember one. Reach out to him, ask him about it. We'll reach that question tomorrow, please. Okay. Now, there's, right. there's one big thing... There's more? I, I call the elephant in the room here, and that is the influence of um, the Wilbraham VSO mm -hmm. on our past two uh, VSOs. And um, we don't have some specifics, but on the termination interviews, that was a, a key issue, that um, there was a feeling of uh, that our VSOs had to conform to the way the Wilbraham VSO wants things done. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that. We have our own VSO. Mm -hmm. We have mentioned this to him. He's a very, has a good, strong personality. Mm -hmm. And I also want you to know that if we don't have the, v if the VSO is on vacation, there's no reason to go to another town or to go to another uh, a VSO because that's my backup. Mm -hmm. I, I'm his backup. Okay. And, and I don't think that's well known, and we'll we'll bring that up at the uh, at the meeting. Okay, good. And I'm sure, believe me, I'm sure that everybody was at the best intentions to serve the vets, and that's our number one priority. Right. Right. So but let's just all play nice. Okay. Okay. Great. Ken, thank you so much. All right. This is the best. 
in my years. This is the best interaction I've had. You know, you coming in, et cetera. So I appreciate it. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, Pam, thank you. There, there was a, a, a question. John. John. There, John. Okay. <laughs> um, there was a question about the flags. Um, that yeah, I think we. Uh, if you chat with Pam, okay, I think Pam. it's going to be Pam Courtney. She's uh, yes. straighten that yeah. out by the billing and stuff. Okay. okay. So because yeah. if you guys pay it, I just want to make sure that we submit. She's off today and, and I get you seventy five percent. I saw the email questions. back before. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Good. I typed it in. I assume I spelled it correctly. Last right? name. Jeremini. Right, we're here. Once right you get to the right R O M I N I. Right. And he, and he yes. needs a photo for the paper as well, Ken. So I spelled okay. that correctly, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you get your badge yet from Jane, by the way? No. What? And, um, Didn't get a town badge? Do you have a card? No. Nope. Yeah, but you can get a card. There's a lot of people that don't. I keep sending it and just. Somebody doesn't get it done. I don't know. Okay, it's a company that's doing it. Can I recommend that we have Jason come in and meet us too, not just at the employee meeting? Oh, definitely. Yes. You were ringing. No, you were ringing. I would love to do that, okay. but I didn't know if, it, if, I had, if the staff meeting was the place to go. No, no. Well, I think both, both also places. come to bring both him to places. a selectman's meeting. Great. Does he live local? Grimfield. Okay, great. So our next meeting is the 24th. Yeah, the 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Selectman like to meet everyone. We'll meet him at the market instead. We'll go out there. If you <laughs> dare. <laughs> Craig wants to look for something, uh, I'm sure. At the, the flea market? Yeah, uh, 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 just make sure you put it on the agenda and I'll bring him in. Great. Okay. All right, we're every other week. So if not, the, if not the 24th, it'll be the first meeting in August. Okay. Yeah. Great. I think we're on the road to a, a good I think relationship. So too. Do you have a name, a full name for him, or can't we say that yet? Is he, he signed uh, in, right? J yes, he signed in. Jason, and I think it's B U G. E N E R Bergener. Berg Berg Bergener. B U R G E R okay, N E R. Jason, Jason B. B U R G E N E R. Yes. Bergener. -E 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 <laughs> you call him J. G E N E R. Ken, thanks for okay. coming in. Got Thank it. you. Appreciate okay. it. Pam, Thank it was great you. to meet you. Yeah. Thank you for coming nice out here. Thank you for your time. And it has not that bill has not been paid. It hasn't. Just that way I spell it. Yeah, check with yeah, okay, please. Thank you. Okay, she'll be in tomorrow. Um, Thanks. Scott's on a vacation until 28th. Okay, so we have time. I, I think we should. Be That's a good suggestion by Jane. Yeah, I mean, yeah. nice and secure. Uh, easement on Glendale Road. I thought this is something that was between planning and maybe a little mark stuff as well. Right? Mm -hmm. I think it really planning is where things okay. need to. Let me reach out to, I think we have a meeting this week, planning board meeting, so I'll reach out to Joanne and Madison yeah. and find out what's happening on that. Uh, our positions here, obviously you, we have an interview this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on with that. So we'll be, we'll be two for three from our immediate agenda. The third position would be uh, advertising for Jane's position, but I anticipate that would be in sometime in the fall. Yeah. Okay. So we have a, we have a fire. A, I think six months yeah, ago. Probably. Right. And I think we have a strong candidate for the yeah. second position. Okay. Yeah, Anthony. Um, I had a phone meeting with Web City last week. We set up a date for our first community outreach program mm -hmm. that we're going to do to inform residents of what's going on with the fiber optic optic project, the benefits, you know, everything that comes along with it, and that's going to be September seventh, a Thursday. I believe is what we had said would be the easiest thing to do. Okay, wait for the parents to get the cover. Yeah, it'll be after school starts, so mm -hmm. parents will be back mm -hmm. on vacation. Right. And then from there, we're going to take that reception and plan another one roughly a month later before town meeting. So, but we, we set in stone. Is that the evening 7th. typically like a six or seven? Or we'll probably do six o'clock, okay. I think is what we decided. So now the next step is for Bob and I to get together with the fiber optic committee or get them up on the speed mm -hmm. on what we need for information from them and start giving out tasks for them to do before, prior to this right. community meeting. Right. You know, publicity, promotion, whatever. Yep. Okay. Do I have anything else? Uh, I think we're complete. Uh, wire out in the parking lot that's really looped down 
National Grid came to look at it today in its charters. Hmm. So I have to contact somebody there and ask them to come out and look at it and fix it. Okay. Okay. Just letting you know. Back in the day, Jane would have climbed the pole and fixed it herself, but you know. I still can, but I might have. <laughs> so what's it, what's it bringing in here? Because we have free cable. Free cable in the town hall. Do we have free cable in the town hall? Yeah. It's part of the contract. Is it? Yeah. Do, do, we? do we have any TVs in here that hooked up to no, the cable? No, not anymore. <laughs> Is that hooked up to the cable? Yeah. This doesn't have cable. No, it doesn't, but it could have. Well, my, I mean, my, what's the TV has a core? My, section, my question was, we're running MBI in here for right. internet in here, so we're right. not running charter for internet in here. Right, so, so it, how does it hook up? We don't have it. We, don't, we couldn't. I mean, it's in the contract that we could if we ran the cables, but we cut the cables, right? I don't know what we've done inside the building. I've, I've never seen a TV in here with, I don't know, maybe the library has something. Well, it also could be the cable, you know. What are they running for? When you say cable, I mean, is that also the uh, streaming? This is, this, is, this is a smart TV, right? right. I mean, so what do you, what do you, what are you no, I'm saying we used to have charter. I mean, used to say they ever took that wire away. But it's hooked to the internet. Right, it, it could right. be. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Don. Don says he seconds it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Have a safe week.